Calavito was honored, signifying his 80th birthday. First 10,000 fans got a replica of his Cleveland Indians Hall of Fame plaque. Here in our own area, we have the Football Hall of Fame. And one of the items on my bucket list is to one day visit Cooperstown, the Baseball Hall of Fame. I can't believe I've never been there. Well, if you're looking for some summer beach reading, you might want to look at the book of Hebrews, which contains the heroes of the faith, the Christian Hall of Fame. It's a great book, though one you may need to sit down and find a good Bible commentary to go through. Basically, the book of Hebrews can come come down to one word, faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look to you, sometimes it's good for us to look at others who point the way to you as it's good for us to be one of those others so that others may find their way to you through us. Speak to our listening hearts this morning as we proclaim the good news of your word to us. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Everyone has faith. A Houston pastor by the name of John Bisgano put it this way, faith is the heart of life. You go to a doctor whose name you cannot pronounce, he gives you a prescription you cannot read, you take it to a pharmacist you've never met, he gives you some medicine you do not understand, and yet you take it. That's living by faith. The fact is, we cannot get through a single day without living by faith. When we flip on a light switch, we have faith that the electric will do its deed. Turn on the ignition switch of your car. We have faith that it will start. Even when we mail a letter using the United States Postal System, we have faith that sooner or later it will arrive. Sometimes, of course, our faith may be misplaced because faith is only as valuable as the object of that faith. And the same is true of our spiritual lives. Even with people who claim no religion at all, they still live by faith. Everyone lives by faith. Every human being puts faith in something. It may be in some notion of human potential, It may be the supremacy of science, reason, or political power. Or they may have faith in some vague concept like being at one with nature. But everyone lives every day by faith. Hebrews, particularly Hebrews chapter 11, is called the faith chapter. It's a book about faith. It would be easy to build an entire year-long sermon series on this one book alone. But don't worry, we're just going to skim the surface today by looking at what biblical faith is. The book of Hebrews takes a big concept and puts it in just a few words. Hebrews says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. Faith is being sure of what we hope for, certain of what we do not see. A.W. Tozer has an interesting explanation of this verse. Tozer said, faith is seeing the invisible, not the non-existent. Faith is seeing the invisible, not the non-existent. Some people think faith is believing in something that's not there. Biblical faith believes God when he tells us there is a reality a reality which we cannot see. Faith means that we keep our eyes on God, the one who controls all circumstance, not on the circumstances themselves. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 puts it this way to add some clarification. We live by faith, not by sight. Now that sounds simple, but for some reason, people get all kinds of misconceptions about what faith is. So let's begin by taking a few minutes to look at what biblical faith is not. 
For one thing, faith is not a blind leap into the dark. Some people think that you have to ignore logic, cast aside reason, in order to have faith and believe in God. The fact is, believing there is no God requires even more of a faith. If atheists, agnostics, or secular humanists put, <clears throat> put their faith in words, it might sound like something like this. By faith, we believe that the universe evolved from mindless matter so that order accidentally emerged from chaos. Of course, they are hard-pressed to find any evidence for the statement of this fact. Science cons consistently shows that order does not grow from chaos. Order always points to a designer. And for those of us who have faith, we believe in a master designer. Now, I find the book of Hebrews, particularly 11.3, much more plausible. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that by what is seen is made out of what was visible. Both creeds require faith. But Christian faith is compatible with logic and reason. It's one of the bill of goods of the 20th century of the Enlightenment that it does not that's why we need to maybe go to pre-enlightenment scholars such as Blaise Pascal for some of our philosophical thinking. Creeds require faith, but Christian faith is compatible with logic and reason based on historical evidence supported by biblical record, personal testimony, our own experience. D.L. Moody says this about faith. I prayed for faith, thought that someday it would come down and strike me like lightning. But faith didn't seem to come. One day I read in Romans that faith comes from hearing, and hearing comes by reading the Word of God. I had up to this time closed my Bible, yet prayed for faith. So now I opened my Bible, began to study, and my faith has been growing ever since. This reminds us that it just doesn't always happen. We have our part, Bible study, worship, sharing with a brother and sister. So faith is not a blind leap into the dark. Another misconception is that f is faith is that we can make God do anything we want. But biblical faith is not the ability to manipulate God. Some Christians think faith is a kind of, of, of potion that enables us to make God do what we want him to do. We can name it and claim it, blab it, and grab it. But that kind of faith never seems to outlast life's disappointments, does it? When a loved one is not healed, when a promotion doesn't come your way, when some unforeseen tragedy strikes, false faith of that type usually crumbles. Biblical faith does not believe that God will do what we say, Biblical faith knows that God will do what he says. By faith, we rest on the promises of God, no matter what. Another misconception about faith is that faith means knowing all the facts and learning all the rules. But faith is not an adherence to a list of do's and don'ts. Biblical faith is a relationship with a personal God. In the Old Testament, God is often referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now that makes sense if you think about it. Suppose you wanted to tell someone who Ed Skidmore is. Well, you would say, well, Ed Skidmore is his social security number, 301521284. Or Ed Skidmore is his bank account number. Or maybe it's his address where he lives, or his age, his height, his weight. But if you really want to know who someone is, you might say, well, Ed Skidmore is the father of, of Katie and Kimberly, the grandfather of David or Morgan, the husband of Susan, the minister of the Castle Hills United Methodist Church, whatever. If you want to know what a person is like, look to the people with whom they spend time and care about. And look at the people who care about them if you want to know who God is, look at the people God cares for and the people who care about God. That's why Hebrews gives a whole list of people who put their trust in God, what we call the Hall of Fame. 
These Bible heroes show us what faith, what real faith does. For one thing, faith will always result in heartfelt worship. They go hand in hand. Real faith and real worship necessitate one another. Faith allows us to worship. The first biblical example of worshiper is Abel, way back in the book of Genesis, that younger brother of Cain, who was the firstborn to the first parents, Adam and Eve. The text reminds us that by faith, Abel offered God a sacrifice more pleasing than Cain's. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of him. Abel worshipped in obedience with a sincere heart, and his faith pleased God. Unfortunately, Cain's heart was not where it ought to be, and he was not pleasing to God. And out of envy, what did Cain do? He killed his brother Abel. But Abel's honest worship stands as a testimony to us all. Faith that pleases God always goes hand in hand with worship. Faith allows us to walk with God. The next example on our list of faith heroes from the book of Hebrews is a rather obscure character by the name of Enoch, who's primarily known for one thing. Enoch walked with God. We don't know much about him, but what we do know is quite impressive. Genesis 5.24 tells us Enoch walked with God and then he was no more because God took him away to heaven. The Bible says he was translated to heaven which simply means he could not be found. God had taken him away. He had not died, but he went to heaven anyway. Evidently, Enoch walked so closely with God that God took him home without Enoch having to go through the physical experience of death. From Enoch, we learn to walk with God is to please God. So biblical faith allows us to worship, to walk with God, to have that intimate relationship, that fellowship with the Lord, which then leads us to work for the Lord. The next biblical hero in the Hall of Fame is Noah, much better known than than Enoch. Noah is a man whose faith led to some long, hard work. Now, what is Noah primarily known for building? An ark. Does anybody know how long it took? One hundred years. Now, this was not a weekend project. A hundred years. It took Noah and his three boys over a hundred years. Now that's a project. By faith, Noah, living in an arid climate, was building a boat for a hundred years. Can you imagine the stories down at the local tavern on Friday nights about Noah? By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in his holy respect for God, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he became an heir of righteousness. By faith, he became an heir of righteousness. A little boy was overheard saying grace before his meal. After thanking God for the food, he said, and Lord, if you need someone to build an ark, I'll do it. Most of us won't be asked to spend a hundred years building an ark. But I believe that God has given each and every one of us particular work assignments along with the gifts, the skills necessary to do them. Do we have a kind of faith that leads us to work for the kingdom of God? That is a faith that pleases God. I like what Warren Wiersbe says in one of his commentaries. Faith enables us to understand what God does. Faith enables us to see what others cannot see. And as a result, faith enables us to do what others cannot do. Now, the last Bible hero I want us to talk about this morning is the best known of all. In fact, Abraham often is called the father of the faith. Abraham's life teaches us hundreds of lessons about faith. But perhaps the biggest challenge Abraham faced was that his faith required him to wait. Hmm. Abraham waited for a home in the promised land. In fact, he spent his entire life living in tents. Those of us who have spent a weekend at Ichthus may have enjoyed a couple of days, but imagine a lifetime living as a nomad in a tent. 
Now remember, the Bible tells us that Abraham had over 300 armed guards. You don't have 300 armed guards unless you've got something worth guarding. He was not a destitute man. He was a man of means, but yet lived in tents. Waited until he was 100 years old for the promise that God had given him, a son. A hundred years. And all along, Abraham waited faithfully, waited faithfully, waited faithfully for the promised Messiah who never came in his lifetime. Sometimes our faith requires us to wait. Do we sometimes feel like we're stuck in an eternal waiting room? Waiting for an answer to prayer, waiting for a job offer, waiting for the results of a medical test, waiting for whatever, fill in the blank. When we have prayed all that we can pray, done all we can do, sometimes the greatest proof of our faith is simply to wait. A faith that pleases God will enable us to wait with confidence. By faith we believe, in fact we know, that God will see us through to the end. Now, one of the interesting things of all the heroes of the Old Testament in this Hall of Fame, every single one of them waited with faith. All of these people were still living by faith when they died, and not one of them received the great promise that God had made, the coming of Messiah. Every single one of the Old Testament heroes of the faith died before the coming of Jesus. With faith, they look forward to the coming of God's promise. With faith, we look back at his coming and anticipate his second coming. And until that time, we continue to look ahead when all those promises of Scripture will be fulfilled for us. And in the meantime, we worship, we walk, we work, and we wait. We look forward to the time when we will be united with loved ones who have gone before us. We wait for the time when those who suffer will be comforted. We wait with confidence because we know the day of the Lord is coming when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And while we wait, we continue to worship, to walk with God through Christ Jesus and to work to build his kingdom. This kind of faith this worshiping faith, this walking faith, this working faith, this waiting faith, this faith pleases our God. Let us pray.